Folks, we are back with the one and only Casey from Brick by Brick Wealth. And if you go back and look at her playlist, which is Casey, you're going to hear last week she talked about getting deal number seven. We talked about her buy box. So I thought this week we should ask her what her buy box is, why is it important, and uh, just go from there. So how are you doing, Casey? I am doing great, Michael. Thank you so much for having me on today. Yeah, the the audience loves you. They love the fact that uh, you're a stay-at-home mom. You're making it work. You created a side hustle. Lots of people had some great feedback. I don't know if you've seen the comments, but uh, thank you for being here each week. Yes, thanks everyone for the sweet comments. I did read them through. I was like, oh my God, that's so sweet. They like me. <laughs> so let's talk about your buy box. First, can you tell us what your buy box is and then talk about why it's important, at least when you're starting to have a pretty defined one. Yeah, so my buy box is like super basic and easy. It's a... We buy three bedroom, one bathroom houses or three, one and a half. Obviously, the more bathrooms, the better. But three, one is standard out here in Memphis. And we have a certain zip codes that we buy in only. Um, we like to buy houses that are less than 1,500 square feet. It's not necessary for more than that. And then things just start seeing more and more square footage means more doors, more doorknobs, more paint, more flooring. You know, so... Um, we also don't want any high risk things like I prefer no fireplaces, but I won't not have one if it's a newer house. We don't want any pools. I don't want anything next to a freeway. Um, there's some, you know, certain things that will I know will increase my rents or have a good chance of getting the highest rent in the neighborhood if it has certain things. Um, we prefer bit prefer brick homes over siding homes, although I do have a siding home um, and it does give me problems, you know? So um, really three ones, three ones and a half. I, I really haven't bought any two bedrooms. I wouldn't not buy a two bedroom, but they don't provide the cash flow that a three bedroom would. Like the price is just really not there. Um, so that's our buy box. It's very specific. Single story home was built in, you know, from 50s to 70s. I know exactly what I'm looking for in the exact neighborhoods. And I don't have to think twice about how much they'll rent for when they're done being fixed up. Like, it's just, I know yeah. the answers. Yeah. The key to the buy box is, is obviously having one, but then looking at it religiously because it, it does come to you over time, right? The first week you have a buy box, you're still confused. But then, you know, the third week, the 10th week. And now you've been doing this for years. You're like, you got it wired, right? Oh and yeah. We just, we'll just look at a, we well, my husband and I, we just love to, he, he does the, in the morning, he'll look at the houses and send me ones he likes in the morning. And then I'm like the late night person that's at night looking through houses, sending him, well, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And you know, it's like, well, I don't know, below this street, it's not going to get as much rent for above this street. You know, to the east of this street, I'll get more rent to the east of the, you know, this neighborhood, this elementary school, I get, I know exactly the rents that I'll get if it was a C grade rental versus an A grade rental. And the house that we bought, you know, a house number seven we bought recently, we're getting quotes to fix up the bathroom and all that. And I'm like, well, and we have to redo the kitchen and we're talking about this morning. And I, I, he was like, well, do you want to just, you know, maybe replace the doors on the cabinets or do all new cabinets? You know, or we can kind of just refinish ones we have. I'm like, I really want top rent. And I know for top rent, I need new cabinets. So I, he's like, we'll get it. We'll get, you know, so it's like the talking back and forth. Do we keep it a secret rental? Do we just kind of make it a B and just kind of make it like nice, but like, oh man, if we would have just put in the new cabinets instead of spending the money on the doors, we would get an extra, like it would look brand new and really nice. And, you know, when we buy houses, we have to think about that in advance, you know, okay, this is the purchase price. This is going to be my monthly mortgage payment, my PITI, at least I'll know that. And I self-manage. So, Okay. So what's my rent going to be? And is it going to, what's my rent going to be if I leave it alone and I just kind of barely fix it up versus really rehab it? Is it, you know, how much more in rent will I get turning it from a C to an A class rental? And is it worth it with the money that's going to cost for rehab? So we look at that in advance. And when I go look for houses to buy in my, you know, my buy box and in my certain neighborhoods, I know that if I buy a house at this price, I can turn it into, you know, an A class rental and get much more cash flow than if I left it alone, just kind of cleaned it up. So having a buy box and really knowing exactly what your properties will rent for if you do X, Y, or Z, you know, it's just, it's second nature to me to, to know these neighborhoods and know exactly what I'll get in rent if I do what, whatever to them. Yeah. And again, I think what people need to realize here is it's the focus and the consistency. Again, you moved to Memphis from Southern California. So you, it's not like you knew these neighborhoods from you were growing up. These were all net new to you. Would you say it took, what, 90 days to get kind of comfortable and maybe 120 to get really good? Or where would you kind of peg that? Because I don't think people realize the time required. 
Well, we kind of started with one zip code, one neighborhood, one school zone. Me the too. first property that we bought, we really understood that neighborhood. And that that probably took, I mean, I guess from when we decided we wanted to buy to when we actually did. And like I had my cool mentor, you know, my local guy helping me push me along and say, this is a good neighborhood, validating my decisions, you know, because he was experienced in the neighborhood in the city and I was brand new and everything. Look, I mean, if you guys are not from the South and you go to the South, everything looks the same. <laughs> I mean, the neighborhoods look all the same. I'm like, I'm lost. Where am I? When we flew out to go look for houses to live in, I didn't know where the heck I was because everything was the same. Like, there's no difference in anything. Like, every, it's just, it's crazy. So to really learn the neighborhoods in an area where all the neighborhoods have trees and they all have brick houses, and it's really hard to understand. Like, I mean, you can tell ghetto, you know, hood properties from nice ones, obviously, but the ones in between, you have to really learn the areas and the neighborhood specifically. So I'd probably say it took a good three months of really like driving around and yeah. looking at properties and Me too. seeing inside and really understanding the difference between one neighborhood to the one next door. And then once we got that property and like, okay, maybe we can buy a cheaper house in a different neighborhood, you know, because the first one we bought was a really nice B class neighborhood. And we bought it from 92.5, you know, this was 2016. So it was a little while back. And then the second one we bought in a C class neighborhood and it was like in the $60,000 range. But then I had to go learn that neighborhood and drive around that neighborhood and really understand the pros, the cons, because in the South is street by street. You're going to have a million dollar house right behind it, a shack. So where's that fine, that fine line? And it's just constantly like, e even when I'm not actively looking to buy, because I'm not looking to buy something every day, right? I'm not looking every day. Like I just, I just bought a house last week. I'm like, give me a break. You know, although I look, but um, when I'm actively looking, I'm looking three times a day on my phone. Like I, I allow... Yeah searches on my phone. They, I get notifications from realtor.com. Yeah. My realtor will, you know, actually my new realtor, I don't even, I'm like, I don't want to be on your list. Like don't put me on the MLS. Okay. I don't want to see your stuff. I get, I just don't like, I get more information from realtor.com that push notifications. And when I see something I really like, then I tell my agent, okay, now send me the MLS sheet. Like I actually right. want to know more, you know, but I'll look three times a day you know, when I'm actively looking yep. and, and to see what's going on in my neighborhood. And I want to know how long things are staying on the market for, or if one, one, you know, is staying on for too long, what's the deal with that? You know, is it just the market or is it overpriced or something wrong with it? But that's how I can learn about the neighborhood by keeping an eye on things, even when I'm not ready to buy. But when I am ready to buy at least three times a day, I'm looking when I'm not looking to buy, I'm still looking at least once a day. Yeah, me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. can't help it. Yeah. One of the things that I think is hardest for, for folks. Now you have a real estate background being a licensed agent in California before you went to Memphis is really the make ready, right? So again, you, you come in, you get a got buy box, you can start to understand rents and taxes and insurance, but eventually you have to build up the skill set to ballpark what's make ready, right? Carpet paint versus remodel a kitchen and bath, like your property number yep. seven, you know, how, how'd you do that? You know, is it it's just repetition and experience or how do you tell people um, to get better at that part of the equation? For me, you have to know what goes into fixing a property up. And from from for us, that was us doing it ourselves. Like Blake and I have every tool that Home Depot and Lowe's sells. Like I'd be surprised. <laughs> we got all the tools. And sometimes we can't find a tool. We got to go buy it because our garage is a mess. So I was like, well, okay. and that's one thing I yell at him about because you can't find anything you know <laughs> dang it but um you have to know what goes into doing a bath. so right now we're getting quotes for a bathroom usually we do it ourselves i know exactly how to do a bathroom i know how to seat a bathtub i know how to do electrical i know how to hang drywall i know about drywall thicknesses i know about windows i know about trim and things like that like i can do bathroom myself like, i'm not gonna do it like i have cut tile i can do it i don't want to do it blake does most of it i help a little bit i try not i try i like to do the outside I like, i'll do the yard like i cut my leg with a head trimmer like i'll do that i'll help you know but really he's an expert from learning it ourselves and it comes from learning so i know how much things cost like i got a quote the other day from some guy who wanted i said just quote me labor OK, yeah. you're not going to get away with quoting me labor and materials in one line item. I know how much the materials cost. I want to know how much you charge for the dirt for, to do the work. Yeah. One guy was like, oh, and I mean, I'm talking a regular tiny bathroom. OK, bathtub combo. Yep. The guy was like five to six K for labor. I go, ha ha ha. I didn't yeah. say that, but in my head, I said, ha ha ha. As I text him back. And I was like, thank you so much. But I was expecting labor and materials to come to that, not just labor. So, And then yes. this other guy, um, yeah. 31, 50 or something like that for labor. I'm like, okay, we're getting closer. 
Okay. Right. Because I'm talking about ripping the whole bath room out and, you know, I can buy a bigger format tile to save on tile costs. I don't need to do tiny little subway tiles. They're difficult. We can do larger format. I got, I know exactly what I'm getting. Like I know how to do it. So all you got to do is tile, seat a bathtub and install like a, a yeah, pedestal gonna, sink and light fixture gonna, and, yep. you know, it's yeah. easy. So what are you going to charge in labor? This guy's a 2,100. I'm like, I don't know. I'm thinking 3,100. I'm like, I don't know. I think it should be like 2,500 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you were, we're getting closer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Getting closer, but it, it's all about knowing how much it costs. Cause you know, what's entailed. And I work you know, I do my one-on-one -on -one coaching with other students and th some people have like, they don't even own a hammer. So they don't know right. when they get a bid or an estimate from a contractor, they don't know. Is it any good? Is it accurate? Is the guy charging too much? Is he not charging enough? And then he's going to overcharge me later because he didn't add certain things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, knowing exactly what goes into the job is going to, even if you've not done it yourself, but you've watched, you know, or you've done enough and you know what goes into it, um, knowing the terminology and knowing what things are is going to help you get a good estimate, you know, because you can go price materials yourself online. And then right. what's that average hourly labor? And a good way to round that is to ask the people, hey, how many hours do you think it's going to take you? Yeah. Like no one's going to tell you their hourly rate to say, how long is this going to take? You know, that's a regular yeah. question. Yeah. And then, you know, take how much they want to charge you and divide that into how many hours. And now you know their hourly rate. So you can kind of quote other job, future jobs in your mind. How long do you think it'll take you to do that? And then you know how much they charge. And now you can go, okay, well, they're probably going to charge me X, right. you know? But yeah, it I think there's time a, in doing it. Yeah, time and repetition. I think if you're a new investor and again you don't have every, every tool on the planet, I think there are some basic things that people can go learn, like windows, right? Again, off the shelf windows versus custom, obviously. But you know, windows three four hundred bucks a window. Then how much to install? Painting exterior versus interior, one tone versus two tones. Flooring, whether it be the laminate or tile. Um. Any other things that are just kind of normal that we we see so often we don't even think about anymore? I mean, like the things that are easy for me would be, you know, painting, interior painting, flooring. Um, and then you can ballpark, you know, like a, a, a bathroom should be uh, 5K. Kitchen depends on, you know, you want rent ready. You just paint it or you want to install new. You do a formatted countertop or granite, you know, slash quartz. Like those quartz, things will yeah. make a big difference. You know, mm -hmm. are you going for the 42 or 39 inch cabinets? Or are you going for the off the shelf short ones that you can get from Home Depot? With They're not right. soft clothes, but you at least get wooden boxes. So like kitchens are like, kind of different you know that's either okay. um a regular kitchen or a little bit better and then there's like higher end which okay. i wouldn't do in any rental even if it was like an a-grade rental i wouldn't do high end i would just do the ones that look high end but they're not right you know? yeah 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 it's and then what about stuff. one thing i what about yards like because again you're buying houses they all come with yards what are you doing to yards like you just mowing it down and you know putting it on the tenant are you adding flowers you do anything like that I, don't, I have no idea. So it depends on what's kind of there. Usually I'll put mulch down because I wanted to make it easy on myself to rent it out. Right. And pictures sell, look sell. So I'll, mow, I'll definitely like, you know, mow, edge, blow, and then I'll trim all the bushes and all that. And if it's kind of a boring yard, I will put it, but there's like a planter area in the front. I will put some bagged mulch down okay. and then yellow flowers. And I learned that back in the day with my real estate days, like yellow flowers. That's what you got to do. Yellow flowers, not pink, not purple, yellow, yellow. flowers. People will remember okay. that. So I will try and put some yellow flowers out. Um, and even just okay. a few of those or a potted plant by each by the front door yeah. makes a big difference. But definitely something people need to pay attention to way before you buy a house um, is go outside and look and see what trees are yours. Yeah. And if they're not yours, do they hang over your house? Because nothing's more expensive than a, removing a tree. I mean, there are more expensive yeah, things. I, but yeah, trees expensive. are rough. Yeah, yeah. They're trees are rough. Lemming them up. How close are they? Do I have a lot of trees on my property? Are they going to like, you know, ruin my, my main line? So, I mean, what's the integrity of that? That's usually a huge surprise is the main line when it failed and they're backing up in your bathtub and your front yard is smushy and you got to dig that up. And then the insurance oh. company is only going to pay for the repair, but they're not going to pay for all the digging up and the putting yeah. it back together. And, you know, so yards are, are important, especially trees. Um, we've Agreed. taken out big trees and that's one of my main items that I look at when I look at the house to see if I want to buy it. Okay. Are there any trees? I have yeah. to take out trees. So I got to limb up trees. Trees are expensive. Yeah, totally agree. A lot of great stuff. I know you put out a lot of great content. Where can people follow you? 
You guys can find me um, on Instagram mostly. That's at Brick by Brick Wealth. And you can check out all my other stuff that I got going on, on my website, brickbybrickwealth.com. And give her a follow. Tell her you came from one rental at a time so she knows her time is valuable here. Thank you.